Hi and welcome. We're the Weasley Sisters. This is episode 233. I'm Jessica, also known as Naturally Nitty. And I'm Alina, also known as Starnets. Today is October 30th. Happy Halloween, just a little Ooh. early. This is our bi-monthly podcast. If you're a first-time watcher, welcome. If you're a returning watcher, thanks for coming back. So pull up a chair, grab your knitting, and craft along with us. Um, first up, we have Mojo. Any Mojo? Um, actually, yes, I do. So I um, finished a couple of things for detention. Um, I finished a comfort blanket that I mailed off today. Let's see if I can get it so it like. So I did that. And then I also finished those fingerless mitts. Awesome. Bella. Um, yeah. I turned those ones in for detention. So, yeah. I'm like in a finishing mood right now. So I fin that's all that I finished. So I hear you. That's awesome. Um, I have been in a knitting craze lately. Um I I can't remember if I I don't think so. I think this is since we podcasted last. I went to Joanne's and I went and found um first I was going to find Chloe's zipper for her sweatshirt or her uh sweater that I'm making made. Um and I happened down the yarn aisle because you do that when you're there. And um this yarn uh premier it's chunky uh serenity it's acrylic, but it's soft, and it was half off, uh, or a little more than half off. It was like under two dollars and fifty cents. It was like two forty-seven or two forty-nine or something like that. Either way, I thought to myself that would be um, perfect for making teacher gifts because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to make um, for gifts this year for Christmas because I always make something, and yeah. Um, so I thought for two bucks or a little bit more, that's like an easy gift for people, right? Right. Yeah. So I bought a bunch of them and I started making um, these uh, simple cowls. Um, basically, it's garter stitch, um, a row of double yarn overs, um, and then more garter stitch as you go. Um, here, look, put it on. But it's super simple. And one skein makes uh, a cowl. Actually, I have like little bits left over that I could probably make um, something else with, but whatever. Um, so I thought I'd do that. So I bought like eight of them. Um, and I've made so far uh, five, six is, I think I'm about to cast off on the sixth one. Which That's is cool. Um, so yeah, so I did that. I also bought yarn. Uh, oh, let me find the ball. Maybe it's not. I don't know where the ball band is. Anyways, um, I made a simple hat for the principal. Uh, I followed the Ann Buds knitting book of patterns. Book of knitting. Yeah, so, that's the next book. The Knitter's Handy Book of Patterns. Anyways, um, and I just made a simple, uh, kind of like the sock head hat. But I used that that book to like figure out how many to cast on. So I think it was like 112 stitches or something, um, which seems like a lot for a hat. But it's like comfy on there. It's not like super tight beanie. It's like a, I don't know. But I, I made, I think it was about five inches of ribbing so that it could double over the ears and be nice and warm. Yeah, He's the principal, um, so I didn't want to give him a cowl. Anyway, so I made that and those things. I've also, um, last week was Chloe's um, best friend's birthday, and we were invited to her party. We're friends, family friends, um, for a long time now. And she loves the color pink, and she loves elephants. So... 
and she had hinted that she loved Leah's uh, panda phone purse that I had made her like a year ago. Panda's I made Leah, it's like just a little bag that she wears her per, her phone in. It's just like a, a tiny little thing. But she liked it, and so I made her an elephant one. Um, oh, cool. And a pink one. And I just kind of made it up. I basically went around and then, like, did the flap and decrease it and made little ears and blah, blah, blah. So that was simple and easy. That is so yeah, and she loves it. So, and she immediately used it. Mom, mom had made that panda purse for her. No, I made that one. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's, oh, and I also finished Chloe's sweater, but she's wore it to school. So, I do not have it uh, with me. But you have right pictures. Now. I have a picture. I posted tons of pictures on Ravelry and on Instagram, so you can feel free to look at that. Um, I'm super, super excited um, with the zipper, and Chloe loves it, and it fits her quite well. Um, the zipper, you, 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 you sewed the zipper on, and then you put gross and ribbon over it? Yeah, let me pull up a... A closer picture a little bit. Well, here's one. You can see how it looks a little bit. Um, so I followed the tutorial in my pat in my pattern, which was wasn't the best. Basically, you steep the sweater, then you take your zipper, you open it up, and you lay it and you pin it down. But so I was at um, a crafters retreat and someone let me use their wonder clips. Which let I me know, tell you, these things are amazing. There are these little clips that in, you use instead of pins. And do you see how straight and flat that is? It's totally yeah. awesome. Um, otherwise, pins always make things all wavy, you know, especially a zipper. It, like, because I started pinning them on, and um, my friend, she's like, Do you want to use these? I was like, Okay. Um, but it's totally awesome. So you pin, you you uh, line them up, you like you flip it open, um, and I like sew the right side of the zipper to the right side of the uh, sweater, um, and you can barely tell. I uh, probably can't even on here, but I basted um, just through the middle by hand um, a stitch all the way up the thing, up the zipper on both sides. And then I laid the grow, gross, grow grain, however you say that, ribbon, um, along it and pinned or clipped um, it on. And then I went around with my sewing machine this time and did a big rectangle along the edges of the ribbon. Okay. Okay. So then, then you have, um, I don't know if you can see, there's another picture like that. Yeah. So that's, so you're not, you're not even, all the stitching you're doing is not going to be seen on the outside of the, of the sweater. Cause then you flip the zipper in. So like it's showing, facing you the right way. And then I hand stitched, uh, let me see, I do have a picture of it somewhere. Um, the ribbon whip stitching it to the back of the the um sweater cool. um but i know a few people on instagram have even asked like if i have a good tutorial so i might just write it up like kind of like what i did and how i did it um but it was it took forever like i wanted to do it right i've i've added a few zippers in my day but they all kind of like they have their issues this one like this is my like best sweater ever like probably because it was on size threes and it's like super nice and lightweight and the zipper is awesome and like i'm really happy with everything and how it turned out but um but yeah 
that zipper took all day, like a full day. I thought I would be done and like get so much other things done when I was at this crafting retreat. But no, that zipper took a full day, like pinning it in place, sewing it by hand, then sewing it by machine, then, then like sewing the back to it or the whatever, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, it took forever, but I'm happy with it. And yeah, so that's, and she likes it and it's good. Cool. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's my mojo for knitting and crocheting. Okay. Do you have any works in progress? Yeah. I'm still working on some of those, uh, cowls. I don't have to show you those. Oh, and I didn't even write this down. Um, but because of you, Alina, I took my um, Hermione sweater that I had completely finished um, years ago. I'm guessing like six. It was seven. like 13 or so. Okay, whatever. Years ago, finished it. I took pictures of it and handed it in. I think it was part of my owl uh, some year. Um, um, but the arms, they decreased at such like a crazy angle like this, that, um, it was so tight from like before my elbow down that I never wore it. Never, ever. It sat in a, a drawer in my upstairs, in my room, like I never wore it. So because you pulled yours out, I was like, I'm going to do that. So I pulled mine out and I ripped it out. And everyone <laughs> at this crafting retreat were like, what were you doing? And I'm like, I'm, it, I don't wear it. Like I'm ripping it out. It's okay. So I ripped out the sleeves and um, I decided to decrease every third round. Oops, every third row instead of, I think it was every other was mine. Um, but yeah, so I've got about the... Uh, five, six inches of the sleeves done. I'm totally knitting them um, inside out because the main part of the fabric is uh, pearl um, and I don't want to pearl it all. So I'm knitting it on the inside as you can see, but here I am right here. Um, but yeah, so far so good. Um, as I always go and that's that. I did not um, oh. Sometimes you rewash your uh, yarn so it like isn't all kinky. I didn't do that. And my fabric is a little bit wonky, but I'm hoping that after it blocks, um, it won't be a problem. Or if it yeah. is, I just don't care about it. <laughs> um, I also am noticing this is uh, Knit Picks, Wool's the Andes. Um, not my favorite yarn, especially ripping it out the sleeves. I don't know if you've done that with yours or not. Like, yeah. it almost, like, felted to itself in some parts. And, like, I never wore the thing. Uh, so, I don't know. Not, not my favorite yarn. But it'll it'll be nice. Um, it'll be, like, an outer sweater type thing. Um, but, yeah. I figured I might as well fix it so I can wear it. Well, I, um, speaking of the sweater, I also had ripped my sleeves. I had made it and I was not even done decreasing and it was down to my wrist and it was like way too um, much. So I had ripped and started knitting it again, this time with like a better decrease. But then as I'm knitting it, this is something that you need to watch. Um, I'm going to get on a little soapbox here for a minute. So I knit this. Probably I haven't touched it for four years because I had problems with the sleeves. So I pulled out the sleeves and started it again. And I'm like knitting it. And I should have realized how big it was. You could like fit that on your head. So... I'm going to put it on and show you. So let me move this out of the way. So yeah, the sizing just wasn't done the best. So I'm putting it on and this was four years ago I started and I'm making a size 
48, I think, which normally for me, I make the 51, which is like extra large. So I did the size 48 and I did the increases the way I should in the color. So then look at this. Look at yeah. how big this is. There's like a good three inches on my arm. Yeah. It's crazy. And so I put on like my Instagram stories like should i rip or should i not and you won't believe like it was like pretty much even there was maybe like 60 i think by the end 70 percent of the people who watched it said i should rip but there was still 30 percent who said no don't and i got messages from people like oh all that work but like look at that well i wonder if you could rip up to it because you knit the yoke first right and then you knit the body yeah but I wonder if you could rip back the body and just redistribute how many stitches go to the arms and how many, oh. But well, look at this. Big. Mine's this hood is super big, too. I think mine is. I did the smaller hood. So I'm going to just start a new one using um, Elizabeth Zimmerman's patterned yoke pattern. And I'm going to take it. But actually, I think I'm going to pull out my wallaby pattern and um, do the hood. Because I like hoods, kind of. But I don't ever use them, especially on a sweater. Yeah. I don't want this huge sweater hood on it. So I'm just going to adjust it and make it a smaller hood. And then um, do the the yoke sweater pattern and sneak it later on. So, I mean, but I got a messages from a lot of people like, oh, you shouldn't rip it. You did all that work. Yeah, but if you're not going to wear it, what's the exactly. point? Which was my point, too, for mine. Like, I finished the whole entire thing, yeah. but I have not worn it one time. Yeah, so if you're going to be knitting something, and I spent time on it, what, like four years ago, but... I never finished it because I knew there was something wrong. And when you're knitting, if you know there's something wrong, stop and yeah. take the gauge and redo it. And I was getting gauge and I was still getting gauge. So I'm going to take my gauge for when I knit it again. And I mean, yeah, it sucks. But at the same time, I mean, I guess I could rip back to here, but um, I don't know. I'm just not. I think I would have to rip back to a, a couple of repeats. Oh, and not increase as much. So I, I was just thinking if you could distribute it more to the like the fronts and the back instead of the arms. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And give a little bit more bigger that way. But I don't know. I mean, it's still really big on me. Exactly. So you might as well just rip it. Um. Luckily, so mine was not that out of proportion. Yeah, so I don't know, because um, I did the math and I did it according to the pattern. I'm just not happy with it, so I'm going to adjust it and do it so I am happy with it. Right, that's Basically. good. And um, I'm debating if I should just start the sweater and pick up and do this, the hood or um, start with the hood, and that's where I'm at right now. But while I was waiting for that, um, but see, even this, like, I was decreasing correctly. Like, this is, like, almost the size. It's just huge. I'm sorry. It's just huge. So, and that was with, like, decreasing more than I was supposed to. Right. So I, anyways. Um, <clears throat> yes. So, I had, I... Pull that out, and I'm going to rip it and just start a new new one because I have a lot of the um, yarn left to make to make it. So I'm just going to start with the the fresh yarn, and then rip and use it as like a sock blank kind of to knit from. That makes sense. That works. So um, sorry, I gotta. So that I pulled that out because it's getting colder, and I want sweaters to wear, and I have a couple that I knit. Um, but I found like, I have some like 
pull, like I have my first epic mashup was that Idlewood, but it's a pullover cowl neck sweater. Yeah. And I don't really wear pullovers much because I just get too hot. So I need cardigans anymore. Um, I just wear cardigans. Um, and I have one that mom knit that I, I wear, but I wanted more. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I've been wearing mine. I had lately. that one that I finished, that I didn't finish. And then I have this one that I started the same time. I think they were like the same owl or newt. Um, so this is the Shalom cardigan. And um, I picked it up and I was like maybe only like three inches here. So I've been knitting on this. After I decided to rip out the Hermione sweater, I decided I'm going to finish this one because it's like pretty much almost there. So I've been knitting on this one. That's is that a short sleeve one, right? It doesn't get arms. It is. But I'm going to add arms because okay. um, even if I want to try and use up all the yarn that I have. Okay. And I forget I got it in like on like a give and take table at an indie knit and spin one year. And it was maybe like seven or eight skeins of this. Um, it's Cascade 220 tweed. And so, um, but yeah, so I've been knitting it. And I, you can kind of see my gauge is, my gauge is the same, but it just looks like, um, I'm, I mean, because it's been sitting here for a while. Um, you can tell where I started knitting, which is like right here. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm doing that. And I'm making this, like this cardigan had just one button at the top, but I, when I first started making it, I put buttons all the way down. So I have buttonholes all the way down. So okay. I find some cool buttons. I'm thinking like wooden buttons. I might order some from somewhere. Yeah, that'd pre be pretty awesome. But yeah, so this is um, going good and I'm increasing for the waist now and just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So yeah. But um, that Hermione one, I am going to put a zipper on, and I already have the zipper. Oh, I'm a little jealous of that. Mine has buttons. Well, when I did that for my owl, part of it was dyeing the yarn because I just had this bare yarn, and I just dyed it all to match. And that yeah. was But anyway, so that's what I've been working on. And I've been on, like, a finishing kick for whatever reason. Like, I haven't started anything new. I've just been on a finishing kick. Though, I think I might run to Joanne's and get some, because um, I was thinking for teacher gifts this year, I was going to do those bowl cozies, but I think I might do the cowls instead, because the last time I did that, the girls were going to the, um, the center. They were doing the online school, so it wasn't with this school, so I'll... I, I think I might do that instead. And the cowls go super fast. Yeah. Like so two hours of, of craft time and they're done. They're easy. Yeah. But I mean, there's three ma male teachers. So, well, Andy doesn't count. There's two male teachers. So I'll just do, I maybe I'll just do like a hat like you did. And that. you can even do, I use uh, thinner yarn, but you could even do chunkier yarn. So it's a, just a chunky hat that's easy and fast. Yeah. So I think I might do that for teacher gifts. I'll talk to Andy when he gets home tonight and see. But yeah, I, that's all that I have works in progress. So um, I was going to say, with my cowls, I decided um, to do some for the girls, small group leaders at their youth group. Um, not Gabe's because he's, you know, a boy and he doesn't care about giving gifts. But um, so I did some for them, too. But they're so fast. Anyway, so moving on to spinning, you spun me. You spin me right round. Um, I don't think I talked about this, or maybe I was in the middle of spinning it last time. My um, cabled yarn. No, you didn't talk about it. Okay, I think I it was like on the wheel. Um, so I laced the flyer, so I spun uh, the singles pretty fine. <laughs> Excuse me. And then let me see if I can get a good. Oh, maybe you did talk about it. It was on the 
wheel. I maybe remember I in the middle of applying, or maybe I did. I don't know. It wasn't the best. I think I did talk about it, but I didn't. Must not have moved it in the show notes. I don't know. Either way, cable yarn. It didn't turn out like the bestest, but it's still soft and squishy and not rope like. Um, yeah, you said you didn't overspin it enough. I I overspun the singles enough. I didn't overspin the first ply. Um, yeah. So I think I'd like to make another one just to see if I can do it how I am picturing it. But uh, either way, um, I handed in my 75% for my newt. Um, I'm even farther along now because I finished Chloe's sweater. But that's a lot thanks to um, being away for the weekend and able to just work on that. Um, but that's it for spinning. Actually, I have one more thing to spin that I haven't even started yet. That's cool. So I have been, um, you can probably hear my thing. I have been carding up. This is the last bat. So then I'll be at 50% yeah. or 75%. So I carded up all of the Shetland or I'm carding it up. I'm, I am on the last one. This is all carded. I have to like take it out of the bag and take pictures of it to turn it in. And then I carted up all of the thin as well. And so basically I ran each of these through like three or four times. Like yeah. the first time is just to open it up. And then the third time, the, you know, second and third, I'll make it smoother. So yeah, so um, I've been, I, so I finished the thin, which is this brown. And then I'm, I'm working on the Shetland. I have this last bat that I'm working on. And I'll be done with the, the carding process. And then I have to sample three ounces of the fiber to see how I want to spin it. Because eventually I'd like to spin a sweater out of these fleeces that I have. Um, so, yeah. But then um, the first part of my new was I blended and spun this yarn for Andy for a sweater vest. Yeah. And um, I finished spinning it and plying it. And now I have to like um, finish it and dye it, like set it and dye it. So I got 858 um, yards. Awesome. Originally I was aiming for 900, but you know, when you have fiber, sometimes you don't always get exactly what you want. But since I started this new, Andy lost like 40 pounds. So I'm down a size. So I really only need like 700 yards. So we're good to go. Um, but yeah, so I got them. And this is like a three ply yarn. I don't know if I showed you it last time. I was working on it. So this is the last big, big bat because I actually had my bulky bobbin I could fly on. Yeah, so I think you were in the middle of doing that. About... Um, 10 or 11 reps print, which is what I was going for, a worsted Aaron thing. So, yeah, it's looking really good. But it's, like, really soft. Like, CVM, I think, is, like, my new favorite fiber to spin. It's super soft and squishy and and just, yeah. And, I mean, yeah, I blended this with el llama. I mean, alpaca. So, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be even softer. But, yeah. So, then I have to dye this dark brown and um this part of my nude will be done um and then i have to spin the samples so that's awesome yeah so that's what i've been doing on spinning and carding like i haven't even been spinning anything else and i have oh i didn't bring it over here but i got my prize from josie bug um mm -hmm for our cardio challenge, which was fiber. It was like, it's like a light green and white and yellow fiber. It's really pretty. Um, but I didn't bring it over here. So I haven't even spun like any fun things. Like I've just been working on like color, like monotone colors, <laughs> it seems like. And it's mm -hmm. not that I'm bored. I just haven't done anything. Like my wheels over there are all empty. Sad and empty. I should spin something. Should. Well, I mean, I have to sample these, so I'll be spinning eventually, but I just haven't been. Yeah, <laughs> but that's all I'm spinning. Very cool. Yeah, I need to get spinning on my 
uh, next fiber, which is, I think I showed this last time, but it's Baby Camel. 50% Baby Camel and 50% Tussa Silk. Ooh, that's, I bet that's really nice. So it's like super, super soft. It's like petting a kitten. That's how soft it is. Like, like okay. a snuggle. Um, and it's going to be, I'm going to do it into a Navajo fly. Cool. Um, but yeah. Um, but moving on. So weaving. Do you have any weaving? No, I'm lame. I still have, I don't know what my deal is. It's like a super weaving block. Like, it's not super hard to, to um, warp the loom. It's just. I'm not doing it. So I don't know what my problem is. Like I'm psyching myself out. Like it's going to be so hard and take forever, but really it's not. So I um, decided to weave something and I just grabbed two different skeins of yarn from my stash and I warped up my loom um, and I wove a scarf. They were chunky yarn. It was on, I think my 10 dent read. Uh, I have a, um rigid heddle loom um and i like ran out of the one color so i added the um the one that i was going to use for the weft um a, a few inches on the end there you can see it's like one strip of purple but anyways it turned out pretty cool i seriously love just plain weaving um and then my fringe twister do you have a fringe twister I think I put mine away. I'll have to pull it out another time. Um, it's super cool because you just clip the little things and you turn it and it twists your fringe. Like, you don't have to spend a lot of time. I mean, you spent time doing it, but it's a lot easier than doing it with your hands. Or you can just tie knots and have it, like, be, you know, yarny ends. But, um, oh, here, I have a picture of it. This doodad. It's super, super cool. I need to get one of those. Yeah, it was like, well, because like the one first scarf or two that I did um, when I first got my loom, I did it by hand and it took forever and it was a pain and oh, it's not fun. This thing makes it easy and pretty even and all that jazz. But anyway, so yeah, um, there it is like mid, mid weave. Um, super easy. It was like chunky yarn went really fast. It took like a day or two. Um, but I took it up to camp with me um, and gave it away as a uh, a gift because we did like a gift exchange. So the person who got it really liked it. And she said her favorite color is purple. So it kind of worked out. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I do this uh, direct warping sort of well I do direct warping so I like warp it like you use just your warping board right and then you have to like put it on yeah, I'm not sure if you can direct warp a uh, loom I'd have to look in my book because I'm still learning I don't know so mine I have the warping board and I set it up on my table over here and then um here you can see I have like the the loom like off the side of it but I go straight from the the back side of the loom and I like you know, warp it onto the board, but then back onto the loom. So then I just have to um, wind it back onto the, the back bar and then put it through the different little heads or whatever, I forget what those are all. I'm horrible with the weaving technical terms, so don't mind me. Um, but yeah, but it goes really fast. I think like warping it is like half the time that it takes to like weave it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I want to make another one because a friend of mine that was went up with me, she's like, oh, I was hoping I get get that that gift. Like it was they were all wrapped up. It's kind of like white elephant type of thing where you go around and you pick and you steal from people. So you don't know what you're getting until you open it. Um, so I think I'm going to make her a scarf with similar ish colors just to give her. But um, anyways. Uh, so yeah, I've kind of, I think, I think I just have like the crafting bug because it's cold out and you want to do all things wool. Like that's just me. So what did you get in this exchange? 
Oh, I left it over here, but a really pretty um, dish towel that was embroidered. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, along the whole bottom. It was really pretty. So, very cool. Um, and it's always fun to see what different people make and stuff. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So, um, sewing, of course I'm sewing. Um, mm -hmm. I have Indie Knit and Spin in two weeks, so I should be sewing more than I have been, but. Um, that's crazy. You better get on that. <laughs> um, I took my machine and I sewed our Christmas BJs, which I usually wait until like the last minute or not usually I try not to, but sometimes that just happens. Like I I'm very wishy-washy while well, I was at Joanne's and they had flannel on sale for, um, 50% off. That was the day I got the yarn and I was like, Ooh, maybe I should get it because 50% off is a good deal. Right. So, but I didn't buy it. Cause I was like, uh, I don't know if I want to do it this year. And then, uh, the next day, I got a notification from my Joann's app that said you could take another 20% off your entire fabric order, no matter if it was on sale or clearance or whatever. So I was like, okay, I can do 70% off. Like, that's a really good deal. And really, flannel's like $5 a yard, $6 a yard. But still, even cheaper. So, like, I think it came down to, like, the amount, I think it was, like, less than $7 per pajama pant. That's nice. Yeah. Um, cause I mean, it adds up when you have six people in the family. Anyway, so these ones are mine. Um, I followed the walk the plank pajama pants from patterns for pirates. Um, but I also actually in the bottom of mine, I put elastic in the bottom so that they're like poofy around my feet. Cause I always step on them and I hate that. Um, but I wore them for a night when I was there after I finished them and they're super cute and they're llamas. Um, I really wanted, I, there's a couple other fabrics, and I'll show you the other kids. So these are, um, that I want to they had like really cute sloths and stuff like that and um, stuff, but these are Joe's. I'm not going to hold them all up, but he likes to hunt with bow and arrow, so that's why I got those. <laughs> And I can't show these on anywhere else because the kids like have Instagram and are on Facebook and stuff. So I can't show them anywhere. Hopefully they won't watch this. Um, but Chloe loves the foxes. Oh, you didn't find any. Uh, oh, that's Leah. Never mind. Yeah. So this is Chloe's. She likes the foxes. Leah loves pandas. Oh, you found pandas. So there's cute little pandas. I think she's going to geek out. I think they're both going to geek out over that. These I wanted for myself. But then it's really hard um, shopping for boys. So, so this is sushi, and I really wanted them for myself. But then I was like, you know what? Maybe it'll make me want sushi even more if I see them, and I'm not really supposed to use sushi that much with the whole keto thing and rice. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, but I made them for Gabe because he loves sushi as well. Um, and it's really hard finding boy fabric. That's not like trucks. That's Yeah, like dinosaurs or something like so this, I thought, I thought that was good for him. And then this one I got for, well, I almost got this one for Gabe, but I got this one for Truman. Um, Cause it was like the only other boy, older boy, it just is like gaming. And I didn't want to like rub it in Gabe's face. Cause right now he has no gaming because he's been grounded for like months. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so those are Trubans. But yeah. And they're all, they're all sewn up. And cool. done. So you only put the elastic around the foot for you? You didn't do it for yeah, the Yeah, just for me because I didn't want to spend the time. Maybe I'll like thread it through if they ask for it because sometimes they're long and there's... So I brought... I have a serger, a really cheap serger that I got from Joann's a couple, whatever, a while ago, years ago, um, that I used like a 50% off coupon on um, just to, you know, do seams and stuff, you know, like the inside edges. I brought it up with the intent of making these pajama pants. And I get up there, I sew like the first part and then you like, you sew the seam and then you're supposed to like serge the two seams together after you sew it. Um, 
I pull it out. I get it all set up. I don't have the cord and like the pedal for the serger. I'm like, how stupid am I? So I had to use my my regular machine with some like weird like zigzag, zigzaggy. But it wasn't. It was like a different stitch. But it took like five times longer than a stupid serger would take. So these took me longer too. So I like. I usually just serge the around the outside and then sew it. Like before, I don't sew it first. I serge the edges and then I oh, sew separately. It. Yeah. Oh. Well, this way, then you like you serge like the inseam and then you serge around the cr crotch or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I, that's why I do it. That's the way I do it. Oh yeah, I also added like in the back. I added a little. Um, ribbon so they know where the tag is yeah i do that too um but yeah so so i need to um reprint that pattern i think i need to get like see if julian's has like tracing paper like pattern paper and yeah. print the pattern out and then trace it on like just a big piece of paper yeah that would be easier it was a pain in the butt cutting them out i cut them out the night before I left at like midnight, it was so not fun. But I was like, I'm doing all the cutting now. I'm not bringing it up oh, there. You should have, because at the at the retreat, you had those big tables. It would have been really nice. Well, those big tables are taken up by lots of people and sewing machines. Oh, well, I wonder if, um, like, I don't know if your library has them, but our library has a ton of tables. And I wonder if they wouldn't mind you going in there and using it. Hmm, I don't know. Um, but I for myself because I usually pitch and floor and that like hurts your back. Oh, I do it on my table, like my dining room table. No it was table. Just, I just hate cutting things no. out. No. Uh, no table. Um but uh That's how you know you're addicted. I will say I paid I took everyone's measurements and I paid better attention and mine fit me so much better than any year before. So I'm very excited, like I've been like spot on with like Chloe's sweater fits awesome and these pants fit me awesome. So I'm really excited. I hope they fit all the kids well. <laughs> um, Cause usually I'm kind of like willy nilly go with the flow. And well, I think for this year, I'm going to have to have Madison take her high hip measurement, like take her measurements so I can make them like Bella's I can take and Andy's I can. I ended up everyone used adult sizes except for Drubin. Yep. It sucks when your kids get big. I know. It's crazy. Um, but Gabe, poor Gabe's like his, he's like taller than all the kids, but he's skinnier than every single one. Well, not Druben, but like he's tiny in the waist. So like his elastic, I had to like stretch so far to like make the, it like the fabric come. Uh, anyways. That's what Fun stuff. I'm excited though. Um, but I really like the elastic around the bottom of mine. So I'm happy that I did that. Um, but yeah, and it, they were super easy. So I think I want to try making um, with like a knit fabric, if I find them, like pajama shorts for like in the summer. I think that would be fun to make those for the final too. I guess you could, um, but whatever. Um, Binging? I've been listening to the Kitty Norville series. Um, I forget how many I've listened to, but I'm on Kitty Raises Hell. Um, I think it's like ahead of me. four or five into it. And like, they're pretty good. I'm a little irritated. Like, what one did you end on? I ended on, they just got back from Las Vegas. Like, they just got married. Okay, so this is the one right after that. Yeah, and I kind of stalled because I'm, I like, I like him, but I just don't like the couple. Oh, right. So that's what I'm like irritated. Like, I, I'm mad that she isn't with McCormick, but whatever. Like, I, I like him. Like, I like him and I like how he likes her and how he treats her. But I hate that his cousin is there. You know what I mean? Like, because they set it up like her and and McCormick would get together. And then and the only reason, and obviously she loves him and stuff, but the only reason they're together is because he, not that I want to like totally spoil it for people. So if you really care about the series, turn it off for a minute, but because he like turns into a werewolf. So like, Oh wow. We're a couple now. Yeah. And I, I don't like that. So 
So that part I don't like. But and I st- that's why I stalled out, and I've been listening to other stuff. So it's it's still okay, and it's interesting enough. Um, you know, there's always bigger and better bad guys. So but I thought the part that was funny where she at the end of that book she was like she needs to like find someone where she's not saving him all the time. That made me laugh really hard because that's what it's basically like. Yeah. Yeah, no, he comes into his own a little bit more in, in this next one. I'm almost at the end of this book. Um, but anyways, so that's good. But um, I haven't been watching anything. I've been listening a lot and knitting a lot, so I haven't been watching things. And then my, I was trying to watch that Stitcher show while well, our Sling subscription that we canceled, finally canceled a couple days ago. So I can't even, like, finish that. Um, so, yeah. Well... I've been binging watching stuff, not really reading. I'm, I'm reading, I'm listening to Once Burned, which is um, in the same world, the Night Huntress world that I was talking about last time okay. um, with um, Vlad, or AKA Dracula, but he doesn't like to call Dracula. So anyways, um, I kind of stalled out on that, like too, like I'm not, I don't know. I'm just kind of like, I don't know, you go through like, I always find myself comparing them to like the Mercy series or whatever. Like, and then like when my mind starts wandering, like while you're listening to something, it's hard. Yeah. Well, I just kind of like, stopped as I started watching things because I'm trying to get my newts close to being done. So um, I've been carding a lot. So I've been watching a lot of stuff, like a lot. Like I finished Queen of the South. I don't like how that ended. I I finished The Magicians because I had like a couple of episodes to watch in that last season. And then I binge, like seriously binge watched The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which is like a new show that they just released like two or three days ago. Is it um, good? Um, it's like dark. Like if you're expecting like a Sabrina, like the cartoon or the old where... Um, the old 90s version don't yeah. it's like super dark and crazy but i i really liked it like if you like supernatural you'll like it so um it was really really dark though and um um yeah so i finished that but then i started watching um i started watching man in the high castle like the second season because they have the third season out now. And I'm like, why have I not been watching this? I forgot how much I like that show. I'm watching that. I'm watching Bones. Like, it depends on, like, what mood I'm in. Yeah. But I, after watching the Sabrina, I, I started watching that Being Human to see if I would like it. And it's okay. I'm not sure if I'm, like, hooked. I watched that, and I stalled somewhere. I don't even know what, how many seasons are there of that? I think there's only two, maybe three. Maybe I only got, I think I got, I forget how far I got into it. I watched a few and it was okay, but I never got like hooked into it. I so, thought about going back. Yeah. So I started watching that, but then I started watching Hemlock Grove, which is a Netflix, like before they had all these Netflix originals, it was like one of the first originals. Yeah. I watched that. The first season, but now there's three seasons. Oh. So I'm watching the first season again and like catching up on that one. Okay. Um, I just started that yesterday, um, but or the day before. I don't remember. Um, but I started watching Stitchers because you were talking about it. And I kind of stalled out in the third season, partly I, because it gets like, I don't know. It's not as cool as it was. And then also it's on Sling, so you have commercials. And I'm like over commercials. Like it's always, they're so annoying. Like, I'm so spoiled having Netflix and not having commercials. So. Yeah. But yeah, so I've been watching that. And then like Andy and I are on the last season of Parks and Rec. And that's really good. So that's what I've been watching. And Bella and I are watching Once Upon a Time. Wow. Yeah, that is a lot. <laughs> and, so it's like I need to like stop watching and start listening. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. So yeah, 
Ugh. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I haven't been watching much at all. But yeah, I mean, like, I guess I could listen to stuff as I'm doing this, but I'm just, I don't. So, um, what's up? Um, I pretty much talked about, like, I, you know, I went to the um, crafters retreat this past weekend. We left on Thursday morning, and I got, got back on Sunday night. Um, lots of fun, got lots of stuff done. Um, it's always nice to get away. Um, but yeah. Um, I had Rags Fiber Art Show, and I was outside, and it was a little cold, but I um, have a tent, so I did that, and it was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of people came out, like that was like a local ish one. Okay. And then Madison had taken her driver's license test and got her driver's license. And then we took her back to college. And then okay. last, this past weekend, Bella had a friend sleepover for her birthday because she went to a youth retreat um, over her birthday weekend. So mm -hmm. that was fun. Like this weekend, seems like it went really fast. Like, too fast. Definitely. But, um, you know, things are good. So... Um, while I was at Rags, one of the ladies from my knitting group came and she had this purse and she shared where she got it. But look, it like shimmers. Can you see that? that? Yeah, kind of. So if you look at it up close, it looks like a dark gray on black. But then if you turn it, you see like a purple, blue, iridescent, luminous. So I ordered one. I was going to get the bigger one, but Andy wanted a, um, Andy wanted a, there's a bigger one that's like, actually, this looks as big as I want. So I got the medium size. They have a bigger one and they have like a backpack, um, but it's super awesome and shimmery. And I just got it in the mail right before we podcasted. So <laughs> I really talked about it. But um, I also ordered Andy a R2D2 phone case. Okay. Why I got the medium one because I just got a gift card. And well, I got the smaller one, so it was cheaper, and I could get him that other case. But, yeah. Um, that's pretty much all that's been going on in my life. Um, okay, so I – you enter thing giveaways on Instagram a lot, right? Yeah. Some people – I usually don't. But I did enter this one – it was a few weeks ago. Um, and I actually won. Anyway, so it was a – um, book, and it just came the other day, um, is, let's say, 21-day ketogenic diet weight loss challenge. Um, but it's kind of cool. Um, a lot of the first half of it is, like, basically what the keto diet is, and um, it talks about uh, just basic things, kind of, and there's, like, workout things in there, um, and like, you know, healthy, uh, just habits like sleeping and just different stuff like that. Then, and, and sleeping and I don't know, different things. Anyways, then the next half of it is the, um, recipes and stuff. And a lot of it looks good, but it also has like a, a weekly tracker, like for your 21 day, whatever. Um, so I won't use that because I'm already into it, but, um, but the recipes and stuff look good, um, most of them. Some of them, um, a lot for the, like, I'll say desserts and snacks. They're like, use this uh, collagen powder. And then they, they it's like this, like, the perfect keto stuff. Have you seen, like, that stuff? So it's kind of like that. But um, not all of them. Um, so I, I was looking forward to making some of the things in here. Um, but it's kind of cool. There's not a ton of pictures in the recipes, which kind of bugs me out because I like pictures with, like, all my recipes because <laughs> uh, I'm very photogenic. Uh, or not pho I'm not <laughs> – I'm photogenic. Um, I like pictures with of things. <laughs> uh, you can tell I'm, like, totally not back to normal yet. My brain isn't, uh, whatever, working. But, no, looks good. 
Um, so yeah, so I never won anything before and I thought it was pretty cool. So I, I got this and then I totally dispersed all the other things. It was like a package of, um, uh, it was from Wild Food Co. Company. Um, there was a package of uh, cocoa butter, um, some like turmeric capsules, which are supposed to be good for you or something. And then a couple different um, sea salt, like sample packet things and something else I forget. Um, but from this wild food company. But yeah, um, it was kind of cool. I, I just thought it was neat that I actually won a giveaway because I never won anything before off of Instagram anyways. Um, but yeah. I never win anything. So. I know, right? And I, I like enter things, not all the time. I used to more, but um, I just thought it was funny because I usually. Like I try to enter all of those. Some of the keto ones, but some of the, like the yarn ones. Yeah, I, I just tagged you on the yarn one. I but, I give up on them now. Like I just I don't mind if people tag me because I don't give a crap. But um, I just don't enter them all the time. Once in a while I will, but they're like it's just certain ones. Some of them are like not my color palette. Yeah, but um, I never win. So whatever. Oh, well, like, you never know. This is me saying. You could try to, oh my goodness. So, sorry. <laughs> Thinking of food um, at the crafters retreat, there's another uh, lady there, lady. She's our, my age ish. Um, she might be a little younger, a little older. I don't re remember. Anyways, she's been low carb for years. Not necessarily keto, but she does low carb. So, she has all the low carb uh, things down, right? So on the first night, the camp doesn't feed us. So we all bring like a dish for a potluck type of thing. I brought artichoke spinach dip and it was delicious. And I made fat head crackers and they were delicious as well. But anyways, she um, brought these cheesy garlic buns that were made with coconut flour, but they were like little biscuity type buns and they were so good. So I'm going to get the recipe from her and then... She also shared with me throughout the, the weekend because I wasn't eating any of the like desserts or anything that like were normally prepared. Um, but she had this, what was it? Pumpkin roll up dessert thing that was so good. It was so yummy. I'm going to have to get the recipe for that too because it was like delicious. It was low carb. And she uses, I think, xylitol for her sweetener because she can't do the erythritol. But anyways, um, I just thought of that and I thought I'd share because it was well, I, um, in my small group, another couple have been eating keto. So like I took, um, chocolate chip cookies yesterday. They were yeah. more like chocolate chip scones. Like the, the consistency and the flavor was more scones than um, cookies, but they were still really good. Yeah. And she brought, um, you know, like we try to bring stuff. She brought right. cheese on celery with the everything but the bagel seasoning. Yeah. Um, it was so good. So, and like, once we found out that, it was just nice. Like, it's nice to like share... To not be the only one who's eating special. <laughs> totally. Um, I also made uh, a big bag of puppy chow to bring with me. Um, and I'll say puppy chow, but it's not. You use pork rinds, and then you make chocolate that you can eat that's sweetened with um, a sweetener of your choice. And then you coat the pork rinds in that, and then... Uh, you put powdered sweetener on top of it and they were really good and i shared those as well and it was good that's cool uh, but it did really good and i didn't like cheat or anything um well, that's, really nice. that's cool and i didn't gain or anything over the weekend so yeah i count that as a win <laughs> it's all that's the hardest thing about doing keto is just like when you're traveling 
Mm -hmm. Well, and like I said, I made snacks and I also, so they feed us there, you know, all the time, but I was like, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to have. So I cut up broccoli and cauliflower and I put that in a container and I had Joe grill up some chicken and I just sliced them ahead of time and put that in another smaller container and uh, I made dip. And so I had that all in a cooler and my almond milk um, so that if there was something in a meal that I couldn't have, I could bring, you know, some veggies and chicken if I needed food of some sort. Plus I had that artichoke dip left over and we had that as a snack another night when there was when you know, cause there was some left over from that the first night um, and the puppy chow as a dessert. Um, so I did good. Yeah. That's cool. I um, was looking on Pinterest for different recipes and I just um, had, you know, like they pop up and they're trying to sell stuff to you, but there was like a free dessert, keto dessert recipe. I just, got it in my email this morning so i have to check out those recipes that's fun because i think sometimes you just want something sweet especially with thanksgiving coming i started pinning like thanksgiving recipes yeah because i told andy i'm like he's like all he's like adding more carbs in so he eats potatoes and stuff now mm -hmm. um which is fine because he like lost all the weight and he doesn't need to lose anymore. Right. Um, it just gets frustrating. Like, you know, it just gets frustrating. Being the only one. I hear you. I have everyone um, eating normal crap. <laughs> yeah. So we, so he, so I've been like looking and I was asking if we're going to his, his parents' house for Thanksgiving. I was like, I can make cauli potatoes and like other stuff for uh, for me, basically, because he's not going to eat it. Right. Um, but I'm like, we have like a big turkey. Like I got it when it was on sale. So like your mom doesn't even need to buy a turkey. Like we can give her ours. <laughs> um, you know, and I'll just like make stuff. Like the thing that I'm going to miss the most is the stuffing. Like I love stuffing. Oh, see, I never really liked it. Um, and my mom makes this pineapple stuffing. It's so good. Or allow yourself to have one cheat day. I don't know. Or like one cheat item. Like if that's what you want, you can have like a few bites of it. Yeah, I don't know. Because oh, crazy. any like everything the whole entire day. I don't know. It's all about moderation. Well, we went out to dinner because Bella had a like a Halloween party she went to on Friday. And we went to Longhorn Steakhouse and I got a Montana Mule. It was so good. So it has bourbon, which doesn't have any carbs in it. It had um, lime juice, which had some, and it had um, pureed ginger. And so a lot of the mules use like ginger beer, but it was just straight up pureed ginger. It was so freaking good. So I don't think it had that many carbs, but I, we also got like one of those fried onion things. And yeah. that carbs. <laughs> yes, but, um, you know, like, so I'll, I'll cheat every once in a while, but. I don't know, like Thanksgiving, like mainly the mashed potatoes. So if I make cauli potatoes. And just have the stuffing on the side. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't decided because like, you or know, not. like the and the ham and like the green beans. Right. Those are all fine. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, there was something I was going to tell you and now I don't remember. Oh, well, so we're just totally rambling. So we're going to let you guys go <laughs> and we'll talk to you guys in two weeks or maybe less than that because it'll be a new um, month and we'll have next week. Yeah, we'll probably see you in a week um, with a planning podcast. So we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.